Rowing, rowing really um, rewards um, good training. You can have a lot of people that are physically you know, gifted, but if they're not training hard, they'll get beat by someone who maybe wasn't born with the best genes. You work a training plan in, in a way that you're constantly building, giving enough rest, but also, like you said, peaking for a certain race. And um, you know, you're, you're balancing the amount of the frequency, the intensity of each workout, and the amount of volume that you do and so that increases throughout the season and then you know right after a race you take a little bit of a rest you, you've got to let the body rest a little bit in order to peak a little bit higher the next time greg was good about pushing me to go out and like come on we got to train in this rough water and and it really did pay off because um, it was some of the roughest conditions that i think i've raced in and your body's going to warm up and uh, that means everything's got to increase. Your heart rate's going to increase a little bit, your breathing frequency is going to increase, um, you're creating more and more muscle contractions so that creates more byproducts, some um, waste which go into your bloodstream which need to be you know circulated and, and worked through. Making your heart beat faster and pumping the blood faster. At the catch, which is the, the the beginning part of the stroke, the point is is the boat is at its slowest speed, so you need to bring the speed back up. The most effective and efficient way is to use the biggest muscle groups in your body and all in, in synchronization. So, at the catch, uh, you're you're going to be engaging significantly your lat muscles, um, your quads, your glutes. Um, everything is going to be engaged together, the course holds it all together in order to stand up and kind of propel the boat in that initial little drive. The point of the drive is to accelerate. Once you've actually put the load on the oar, you've now got to move that, that load. And the faster you can move it with acceleration, the, the end point being the fastest that the handle's moving, um, that's, that's the drive. All the muscle groups are working. You're still continually pushing through the entire legs, transferring up through the glutes into the back, um, and then you're finishing off with um, your biceps and your, your arms. So that's the end of the stroke. Obviously the greatest point of acceleration. There's a lot of finesse that comes into the finish. The faster the handle moves, the uh, faster the boat's gonna go. So the handle becomes a big important part of the finish in being able to get that blade out of the water and um, without stopping the run of the boat. You know, using a little bit of shoulders, a little bit of the arms to really push that handle down in a way to get the, the blade out cleanly. So if the, the finish is very explosive and clean, you carry that momentum back into your recovery. You're not pulling yourself back into the catch. You're really just letting that boat run underneath of you while you recoil your body ready for the next one. And so for, you know, you're extending your arms and getting the back over and the legs very controlled into the catch without making any disruption in the motion. You know, for most of the races, and even at, at nationals, you, you recognize names. You you know, you've raced it against this guy. You know, this guy is probably going to beat you off the line, but you can work through him during the body of the race. At Worlds, we didn't know anybody, and so you know, it, it was just go out and see what happens and hope for the best. 
Yeah, but you still spend the whole race worrying about the guys that have the heavy sprint because you don't know who you're racing against. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing for for me, at least in the racing, particularly in the in the single, not as much in the double. But nerves um, in a sprint race are a difficult thing to deal with because they don't help you. Um, they make you come off the line too fast. Uh, you go much faster than you've been training, much faster than you tend to. You get tired more quickly. They don't last the entire race. And uh, you know, at the start of a, a sprint race, when you're when you're sitting there with your you know at the, at the start, and you're sitting there with your arms out and and uh, you're attached to the dock, it's a very unstable position for the boat. And if you start to tighten up, I and mean, a lot of rowing is being loose and, and rowing by feel, if you start to tighten up, it just becomes that much more difficult to, to row well. Is it ready? Ready all. Oh. You know, being a lightweight, you kind of have this, or at least I, I had, and hopefully it, it, winning at Worlds contributed to breaking the mental block that, oh, I can't compete against heavyweights, you know, I'm just a little lightweight. Um, and so for a number of years, you know, you, you get that mindset. And so hopefully uh, it helped me chip away at that and that I can compete against heavyweights. So, so that was important for me as well. Yeah, I think for me it was probably just a few years after I started sculling, I, uh won a medal at the head of the Charles in, in my single, and that was that was really big for me. And, and head racing is a little strange because you actually don't find out until about two hours later how you did. Um, but it was that that marked the point for me from where I transitioned from being a sweep rower into sculling, and I'd sculled for a couple years at that point, and that really struck home with me that I could actually you know become pretty good at this and and and, uh, and stick to it. Sculling provides a lot more flexibility than sweep rowing in terms of being able to. You know, do it by yourself on your schedule with your own equipment. You don't have to coordinate with a team. You don't have to be able to commit to a schedule with everybody else at the same time. And so that was really big. For me, that was winning that medal at the head of Charles sort of in my brain established me as a sculler, as a legitimate sculler now. And, and also was very encouraging for me because it, it meant that if I could skull competitively, then my rowing career would go much longer than I ever anticipated it would as a sweep rower. A big decision point for a lot of us when you get into the race when it, the pain starts to come up and you just have to decide is it really worth that much pain to try to win this race and that, that's a really big thing for rowing is to be able to go through and, and, uh, and push through that because if you can't push through the pain and if you don't want to win badly enough to push through that pain um, you're not going to win many races no matter how big you are or how strong you are. The ideal rower would definitely be a heavyweight. <laughs> yeah, there are certain things, there are certain aspects uh, that help you with rowing. Being tall helps. Having good muscle mass, but not so much as a football player, um, helps. Um, so we're not uh, rowers don't tend to be as as long and lean as runners do. Bottom line, if you're tall and lean, you're going to be able to make a bigger stroke in the water, um, and then powerful. Um, which that comes from being physically in really good shape. And then the other part is the mental attitude. There's a certain type of mental attitude that a rower needs that you don't find in other sports typically. And so that's one of a, a soloist, like a time trialist, where they're ready to just go hard no matter what. They don't need external stimulation usually. They like to work hard. And, um, and then they have the engine behind it. You know, I'd say for rowing, uh, a good power to weight ratio is really important. Rowing is really pretty accommodating to a lot of different body types. I mean, as evidenced by Greg and I, I mean, obviously Greg's a lot taller than I am, and you know, I'm a little, little stockier, um, and yet we can still be pretty close out on the water. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, in addition to just basic physical structure, I mean, you know, there's kind of the mental side of the whole game, and I think, um, you know, like Greg talked about tension. I mean, being able to be calm, to be able to relax, to be able to focus, um, are, are all key key components. I, you know, I plan on rowing until I can't, basically. And you know, one thing that's great about rowing is it's such a low impact sport compared to like a running or something like that. That there's a lot of guys out there in their 80s still, you know, competing at nationals, and so, um, you know, I'm 
kind of looking at this as a war of attrition, <laughs> you know, and I, hopefully I'll be the last man standing and, uh, uh, you know, and keep at it, so. Thank you.